since 2004 with my husband, but I haven't been as active as I have been in the last maybe six or seven, eight years. Is, I'm sorry, John. Okay. Is this maybe part of the healing process? Do you think that this will help move past or just kind of the healing process to be part of the business that he wanted you to have and be part of these meetings and things like that? I think so. He would have wanted me to be at these meetings as difficult as it's been because we just buried him on Friday, but it's still, I'm comforted to know that he's happy and he wants us to move on and move forward. He wouldn't have wanted us to stay home. Was it hard for you as far as coming here on after Friday? And I mean, it seems like a busy weekend. All of a sudden you have the horses and the, like, it seems like everywhere you turn, there's always something going on. It was very busy. It, yeah. it was difficult, but it's easy to keep my mind off of what happened last week. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to move forward. As he wanted, as he would have wanted me mm -hmm. to. Has, has it kind of settled for us? He had, he left me with some incredible executives, vice presidents, employees. So I plan to have everything stay as it was from the beginning, from what he started and what he left me with. What's your vision for both both franchises, long term, short term? Super Bowl, <laughs> <laughs> and um, hopefully the NFL, uh, the NBA playoffs. And hopefully we'll get to the Super Bowl for him one more time or several more times, hopefully this year. You mentioned grooming for events like this, representing the team. Is there any advice uh, he gave you that, that helps you when you attend a meeting or even in front of the media that you kind of take with you? That he, gave you? Um, he just told me to pay attention, and he always thought I was smart, which I doubted that, but that's okay. <laughs> he, um, he thought that I'd be fine. He always told me that I would be, I would be good in this role. And... Um, it's a little humbling to hear somebody of his power to say that, but I'm very happy to continue his legacy. How much, how much interaction have you had now with Mickey and Sean since, since your husband passed? Well, you know, Mickey and uh, Sean and Dennis and I work very closely and have been for the last several years, but these last few days have been um, more uh, concentrated. Do you have anything that you want to say to the Saints fans? I am so grateful and so humbled that they were all there to see my husband. It was so nice. You mentioned, I'm sorry. I really appreciated everybody coming out. It was so kind. And um, he would have been happy. We gave him a great send off. We had um, many people in the organization that worked on that. Um, the fans, the cathedral, the seminary, um, all the priests that came from all over to be there. Um, all our executives, many of our staff, and the fans, everybody was just great. It was just so wonderful. What's been the reception from the rest of the NFL owners just going into your, your first meeting here? They have been so gracious and so kind to me, and I really appreciate it. I saw Jerry Jones in the hallway was one of the first, at least, I was able to see greet you. Did you yes. have any advice or special words, someone that's you know, so big in the NFL? You know, he told me, and many of the owners have told me, if I ever need anything, that I can call on him, which was very kind, and I really appreciate it. And Jerry was actually at the um, wake for Mr. Benson, and several of the other owners were too, but Jerry was one of the first to show up. How would you describe what kind of leader you want to be in your leadership style? You know, I really don't want to change anything that my husband did. I feel like he had a... Um, a phenomenal footprint that he left, and I want to keep it just as it is, because I think it was perfect. What was your football interest before you met, you met Mr. Benson? Well, before I met Mr. Benson, I really didn't know anything about football. <laughs> <laughs> and um, But I learned a lot in the last 14 years, and it's very exciting now. I remember him telling me a story that he wasn't into football when he first bought the team. Too. No, he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and um, but I feel like I have a little bit of an edge because he taught me so much, and so it was great. Yeah, yeah. he came in, I guess, blind. He's just yeah, like, oh, that's he a good did. <laughs> <laughs> but he's been teaching me all these years, so it, it was really an advantage, I think. And, and so the, just going, going back a second, we, you say the structure is kind of in place, so you'll trust Dennis to kind of do what he's been doing. Oh and yes, do absolutely. Doing. Everybody that's in place is going to stay in place. All the employees, all the vice presidents, you know, every, everything that we've been doing is going to continue. I don't want to change anything he's done. In my mind, it was so perfectly set up that there's nothing to change. Hey, Ms. Gale, after Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, Saturday, the fairgrounds 
um, talking to Greg and, and Tom Amos after the race, they felt like that Mr. Benson was overlooking them. And just talk about the, the, uh, how special it was Saturday after the last few days to have some happiness and, and see one of your horses is going to be going to the Kentucky Derby. It was quite special. I, I didn't feel like it was appropriate for me to be at the fairgrounds, but I did stay home and watch it. And I was very excited to see him come so close to winning. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> you feel like Mr. Benson was... was I do. <laughs> I feel like he was right there just pushing him along. <laughs> so it was great. How important do you think it was for you to come out, to come out and say you're going you're gonna to keep the team in New Orleans and, and not sell it? Kind of keep the well, so. you know, I don't think there's any other choice. I think that's the only thing you could do is to keep, to keep his legacy alive. And where else would you go? I'm, I'm from New Orleans. My husband was from New Orleans. And we're just like one big family over there. All our vice presidents and executives, we have lunch every day together. And I eat with the employees like my husband did every day. So... We, we kind of like family. Is it almost, I don't want to use the word upsetting, but when you see reports that would she sell this team, would she do this, is it, is it hurtful in some way thinking that people would think you don't have an interest in this or you're not committed to New Orleans? No, it's disappointing to think that somebody would think that I would mess up his legacy. And it, there's, but, you know, I guess everybody has their opinion, but I would never sell it, no. <laughs> How much over the years, y'all were married, did he, did he lean on you to... Maybe if he was making a big decision, how much input did you have? How much did, did you all talk to him? Talk about that. We talked about every decision he made. I had a, a big input on everything that he did. And um, it was we were very close. We were together 24-7. There were only three days out of the year that we were apart, is that, and that was when he went to Manresa. So we were very close. We were always together. So we talked about everything and all his business. I mean, he was very interested in business and so was I and so I learned a lot from him and I'm so grateful. You are uh, now the fourth female owner in the NFL and only the third in the NBA. Do you relish that opportunity to show that strong women can be strong leaders and, and strong owners as well? Oh, sure, I think it's very important um, and, and I feel very humble that I'm in this position so I, I appreciate it. Has it sunk in that you're the owner of two professional <laughs> sports franchises? No, not yet, but my husband prepared me for this for many years, but I just thought it would be a long time before it actually happened. But now that it's here, I need to move forward, and that's what he would have wanted me to do. One of the things that stood out to me from last week is at the visitation, you stood in there and greeted everybody that came through for nine, ten hours at a time. Why was that so important to you to, to do that? Well, I felt like where else would I be? I mean, I wanted the last few days with my husband to be there, and I wanted to be there for the fans, and so many people came through, and they was just so happy to be there. And everyone expressed their appreciation for me sharing my husband these last few days. So it really gave me more energy to do what they were asking for. So it was really very special. And Ms. Gale, was there, in the visitation, you know, was there a story that someone told you that might have been a complete stranger uh, about your husband that just, just beamed with pride or something that made you laugh maybe that, was, that you'd never heard before? You know, there were so many different stories. I, I can't remember just one in particular, but there were so many people that came and told me so many stories about something he had signed for him, or it was their first game and he happened to see them and went up to him and talked to him. There were just so many stories that different people had. We had people from every walks of life. I mean, it was just amazing. And I just couldn't believe the amount of people that actually showed up. So it was kind of, it was overwhelming to see so many good people paying their respects to a man they, some of them had never met. So it was very nice. Your, uh, your husband's work ethic, he's kind of renowned, he wore his suit, shirt and tie every day to work. Do you plan, you said you want to keep everything the same, do you plan on going to the office every day, working and following in his footsteps in that regard as well? I have been going to the office with my husband probably for the last seven or eight years, every day. And yes, I do dress up. I enjoy dressing <laughs> up and so do he. <laughs> What are, your, what, are your, what are your hobbies? What do you do when you're not, you know? You know, my husband used to say, and, and I really feel the same way, my hobby is working. I enjoy going to the office. I really don't have any hobbies. I, I get up very early in the morning and exercise. I get ready for work, and I go in, and I leave 5.30, 6 o'clock, and come home. And on Saturdays, if we have a horse running, I'll go to the fairgrounds okay. and attend meetings. <laughs> How much discussion have you guys had and how are you going to honor him uh, when the season starts again? 
Um, we started the discussion but haven't quite finalized everything yet because um, we just, like I said, Friday was when we buried him. So we still sort of honoring his death. So I know when the season starts, we're going to have another big celebration for him. I know we're here at the NFL owners meetings, but I know Commissioner Stern said something very nice that he felt like Tom was a football guy who liked basketball, where he said he felt like you look at both teams equally. Do you look at both of these entities in an equal capacity, Pelicans and Saints? I do. I feel like um, all of them are family. Again, just like the, just like the employees, I feel like all these, um, the football team and the basketball team are all family, just like the employees. And I embrace them all. I love seeing everybody. Sean, uh, Sean Payton uh, had written an article that was posted in the Monday Morning Quarterback, and he kind of mentioned in it that Mr. Benson was always an owner that he felt like always gave him everything that he needed to be able to, to be successful. Um, and I think he, uh, paraphrasing, but I think he had some kind of mention of being an owner that kind of let him be able to do his own thing. Just your relationship with, with Tom and seeing their relationship between him and Sean, what, what did you learn about how they were able to work together in, in the bond and relationship that they had? Well, you know, it's very, I always thought, and my husband did too, that it's very important that you give the coaches what they need in order for them to succeed. Because if you don't give them what they need, then they, they have difficulty. Did they, from what you saw, did they have a, a pretty strong relationship that went beyond just the football field? They did. They had a very good relationship. Uh, when we went to the Derby in two years ago, Sean, and, um, Sean was with us, and it was very exciting. Sean and many of our executives came. In fact, many of our employees came. And we have another horse in the Derby this year, Lone Sailor, which is um, my husband won the Lone Sailor Award with President Bush many years ago, so we are very excited to have him in the Derby this year. What is, your management, you is your management style pretty much going to be the same as his? I mean, I think it was Dennis or Mickey, I can't remember which one said, pretty much he hired good people and let them do the job. Yes, and that's what I plan to do because they are they are good people. We have some wonderful executives. What did it mean to you to have them there and much of the visitation hours and much of, the, of Friday there kind of by your side as well? Well, it was very important for them to be there. They were with me in the hospital also. My husband was in the hospital for four weeks, and the executives were there every day also. So it was very encouraging to me, and it really helped. It's their great um, support group for me. I know that you say the strong people in, in keeping things in place. I think over the course of time in professional sports, there are ups and downs, highs and lows. Having to make tough decisions, though, I, I assume you're okay if, if you ever have to cross that bridge and make a difficult decision as well. I think I can make difficult decisions. In fact, I know I can, so I think I'll be fine with that. I'm curious, Jerry Richardson put Tina Becker, COO of the Panthers right now, and there are not a lot of women in power positions in the NFL. Um, are you familiar with her, and what's that mean for the league to have a person of her in that place, and now you in a position of power in the league? Well, I think it's great that women are having an opportunity to be in these positions, and I think we're going to do great. I think it gives a different perspective to the sports industry that's been male the whole time. So a few women every once in a while I think is great. Do you gravitate towards the other women walking into a setting like this? or? You know, I don't have any particular, I mean, I look at men and women as the same. I don't gravitate to one or the other. I've, I've known more of the men longer because they've been around longer, but the women are just the same. <laughs> you have an interior design background, right? Yes, I do. We're gonna see, are we going to see any kind of uh, interior <laughs> changes in there? No, I've done a lot of that already over the years. <laughs> um, I was in the design business for 30 years and um, before I met my husband. And uh, when we met, he said that uh, he didn't want to hear about it. But I've managed to do a lot of the things, a lot of changes. <laughs> yes, I've already done that over the years. <laughs> Thank you Thanks, Ms. Gale. Thank, Thank you, so you all so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you all very much. Y'all have... Oh, thank you all. I'm Larry Holder, by the way. Yes. I'm Mike. Hi. Hi.